This video is going to focus on the reactivity of the group 1 metals. The diagrams shown here are electron configuration diagrams for lithium, sodium and potassium. And you can see we're descending group 1 here. And the key trend in terms of group 1 and their reactivity is that reactivity of the group 1 uh, metals elements increases as you descend the group. And I want to explain the factors that influence this. The first factor which influences the reactivity of the group 1 metals we're going to look at is the increasing distance of the outermost electron from the positive nucleus. So the diagrams shown here are representations of lithium and of sodium. And you can see that we have this increasing distance between the positive nucleus and the outermost electron from the lithium diagram here to the sodium diagram here. So to explain how this influences reactivity, I'm going to explain exactly what's going on behind this. So as you descend group one, the outermost negative electron will be further away from the positive nucleus because there will be more and more inner shells between the nucleus and the outermost electron. This will mean there will be a weaker electrostatic force of attraction between the now further away positive nucleus and the more distant negatively charged outermost electron. It's further away from the influence and attraction of the positive nucleus. This will mean that less heat energy will be required to remove that outermost electron from that atom. And because it's lost more easily with less energy, it will mean that that group one metal is more reactive and will react more readily with uh, other elements such as non-metals. The second factor I want to talk about when explaining the increased reactivity of the group one elements as you descend the group is something called electron shielding. So this first diagram is of lithium and you can see it has one shell between the nucleus and the outermost electron with two electrons in it, whilst the sodium diagram has two electron shells between the nucleus and the outermost electron with two and eight electrons respectively. So it appears to be the case that as you descend group one, there are a greater number of filled inner electron shells between the positive nucleus and the negative outermost electron. Now, the electrons between the nucleus and the outermost electron in these inner shells have a cancelling out effect on some of the attractive force that the nucleus is able to exert. It's cancelling out and nullifying some of that positive um, charge effectively. This um, phenomenon or effect is known as electron shielding. This shielding effect on the outermost electron will decrease the um, positive charge experience and therefore the attractive force experienced by that outermost electron because the inner shielding electrons are cancelling out some of the positive um, charge which would be attracting that outermost electron. Therefore again less heat energy would be required to remove the outermost electron uh, so that outermost electron will be lost more easily, hence why the group one metal atom will be more reactive and lose electrons more readily to other species such as non-metals. So the two factors to consider when looking at reactivity are distance from the nucleus and the shielding effect. The greater the distance of an outermost electron from the nucleus, the less strongly it will be attracted to that nucleus and the more easily it will be lost and the greater number of inner filled electron shells between the outermost electron and the nucleus, uh, the greater the shielding effect. And again, the weaker the attraction of the outermost electron to that nucleus, the more easily and more readily it will be lost with less energy and the more reactive that metal uh, atom will become.